All right, well, we have about 30 minutes or so to uh, review for your exam, which you'll take here in just a moment. Let's quickly review over some things like raising the powers. When you raise a power to a power class, multiply the exponents. When you raise a negative to an even power class, you get a positive, but if you raise a negative to an odd power, what if you raise a positive to an even power? What if you raise a positive to an odd power? The only time you're ever going to end up with a negative is if you have a negative to an odd power. So here, of course, class, our answer will be negative. negative. Now, with the 4, you're not multiplying 4 times 3. You're actually raising 4 to the third power, which means 4 times 4 times 4, which we memorized. 64. What do I get when I finish out the problem, Adam? Negative 64 and 6, the x to the 9. Because we're multiplying the exponents. What about on this next one? A 15a to the x, b to the 7, we're squaring it, Lana? Uh, there we go. Uh, if we're taking roots, well, remember, you're not going to divide anything with the number. You're going to ask what squared gives 289 if it's rational. And then uh, when it comes to uh, exponents, right, to take the root of a power class, we... Well, divide no, that exponent by, by Divide exponent and by index. So what would I get right here, Dylan? Or y squared could be because 17 squared gives 289. And then here we're just cutting the exponents in half. We're dividing by the understood two. Um, can you take the even root of a negative class? No. no, that would be imaginary, wouldn't it? But so here we have to get a positive. Can you take the odd root of a negative class? Mm. Yeah, I would simply get five. Negative, five. negative, right? Just like negative to an odd power is negative, the odd root of the negative is negative. And of course, the cube root of 125 class. Five. Five, finish it out for us, Adam. Um, R to the third power. R cube. S to the 2M. There we go. Any questions on basic powers, basic roots? It's a little bit more recent content here. Um, sometimes, though, you might be asked to take the square to something that it doesn't work out. You can take the square to 289. You can take the cube to 125. You can't take the square to a 48. Lana, what should we do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, factor it and uh, split it up. We'll go 16 and 3 is the best way. Good. And we end up with? Uh, 4 times square root of 3. Because we take the square root of the 16 because we can. We don't take the square root of 3 because we can't. What if we had the square root of a fraction? What do we have to do here, Dylan? Uh, take the root of the denominator. Right, we've got to take the root of the denominator, but we can't take the square root of a 7. So we're just going to change the fraction. It's not going to be 3 sevenths anymore. We're going to change it by multiplying top and bottom by a 7 to get 2149. So now I can take the root of the denominator. And my answer comes out to? The square root of 21 all over 7. The square root of 21 all over a rational 7. Sometimes our radicals have big indexes. And we don't want to leave big indexes. That's annoying. But Adam, what's the key to simplifying a large index? You uh, take the square you would like have like seven squares. Good. Rewrite the radicand as a power. So instead of leaving it as a 49, write it as a seven squared and then the x to the fourth. And once I can see all the exponents, and of course I got my index there, Adam. Uh, the cube root of seven. The cube root of seven x squared. Good. We're going to take a two out of all the little numbers to get a three, one, and two. In other words, as Adam said, the cube root of seven x squared. Any questions on reducing radicals? All right, we had um, uh, adding radicals, but the only way you can add radicals, Lana, is if they are um, like. like or similar, which means same class, um, uh, radicand, and same index. Well, they all have the same index. They're all square roots. <coughs> they don't have the same radicand. Lana, what do I need to do? Um, uh, Split them up again? Good, split them up. And remember, the strategy is find the easiest one and split that first. Which of these looks easiest to you, Lana? Probably 24. Okay, how would you split up the 24? 4 and 6. 4 and 6. And of these two values, you're only going to take the square root of the? 4. To get? 2. 2. But there's already 3 out there, yeah, so we end up getting? 6 times the square root of 6. Perfect. Once we've gotten that, that gives us a clue to the next value, Dylan. They're probably going to end up with a 6, and it is 6 times 25. So when I take the square root of the 25, I get negative 5 times square root of 3. And then here, it also gives us a clue that probably, uh, Adam, there's going to be a 
Uh, let's see. A six. Hmm. This wasn't on my six times tables as a kid. Six times. Oh, it goes in once with three left. Uh -huh. Six goes into 36. Six times. Six times. So with 16 squared of six. And of course, that can reduce to get. There we go. And then we can add them because now they're similar radicals. In class, we get five times. Good. Five times the square root of six for our answer. Here we're multiplying radicals. Do they have to be similar to multiply class? No. No, but you do have to have the same no. index. And I've got the same index. So I just multiply. Uh, Dylan? I would multiply the coefficient three times. In this case, it's a one. You get three, and then five times ten to get the square root of fifty. But I'm going to reduce at the end. Back to one. Um, twenty-five and two. Four. So fifteen times the square root of two. Give it fifteen times the square root of two. Any questions on this? Any questions at all on roots and powers, radicals? These are the kinds of things you're going to see on the exam here in a little bit. Questions at all on this? Another thing we spent a lot of time working on, we should be really solid here, but I wanted to take a look at it with you anyway, is systems of equations. To solve a system of equations, there's a couple ways we could do it. We have the addition method, remember, line them all up, or we could do substitution. What do you want to do here, Adam? Do you want to do addition or substitution? Uh, addition. Addition. So that means we've got to line them up, because right now they're not lined up. How would I rearrange an equation to get them lined up? Uh, you move the x to become negative. Good, so I'm going to keep the 3x negative 2y equals 14, but my bottom equation becomes, you said? Uh, negative x plus 5y equals negative 22. There we go. And good job keeping all of the signs correct as you went. That's very important. Now, at this point, we're going to pick a variable that's going to be eliminated here. Lana, which variable, the x or the y, do you want to eliminate? X. X to me seems easier as well, because all we have to do is? Multiply by 3. In the? So once again, the top equation is going to stay the same, but the bottom equation becomes uh, negative 3x positive 15y equals six, negative 66. Right, you need to be careful as we add these two equations together now. Dylan, the x's of course cancel. cancel. The y's give us 13y. And what about on the other side? Anyone? Good, negative 52. Try to divide both sides by 13. We get y equals? Four. Negative 4. Negative 4. Once I've got the y, I'm not done. Because remember, the point of the system is to solve for two unknowns, x and y. I've got y, so I've got my ordinate. I need the abscissa. How would I go about solving for the abscissa here? Dylan? Plug it in the bottom one. Plug the negative 4 in for into the bottom equation for the y. y. Good. Don't fall into the trap of plugging it in for the x mistake. Let me make sure you're plugging it in for the correct letter and plugging it in for the y. And so my bottom equation is going to become what, Lana? Negative 20 equals um, 20. Yeah, negative 20 equals x minus 22. And then to get the x by itself, just move um, the negative 20 as a positive. And I'll end up class with x is equal to 2. And so there's our answer. Questions on systems of equations. Any questions on systems of equations? All right. We've got uh, several, a uh, whole page, in fact, of other equations that you'll need to be able to solve. We've talked about a lot of different kinds throughout the year. Some of them are really straightforward. Write this down on your paper, 5x. Minus 3 times the quantity 2x plus 4 is equal to 3x. It's a pretty basic equation. We've been doing things like this really since the beginning of the year. Walk me through the process here, Adam. Uh, the order of operations? So. Uh, not necessarily. There's a different order we follow when solving equations. Right. Well, uh, you move the x to become 2x. Oh, help. What do we do, Dylan? Get rid of parentheses. They're in the way. Distribute. You started to say it there. Let's come back to Adam. Now, be careful with your distribution. Negative 6x 
Well. Good. Notice the signs are different. Make sure we don't miss that here. All equal to 3x. And of course, don't lose the 5x at the beginning. Now, what will we do, Lana? Uh, combine. Combine like terms, but there's only one place we can combine. The negative 6x and the 5x. To get? Uh, negative 1x. All right. Then what do I do, Dylan? Uh, move the Careful. Negative 12. Negative 12 equals 4x. So x just ends up being, class? Negative 3. Negative 3 for our answer. Well, an equation kind of like that. We'll also have an equation that has some fractions in it, kind of like this one here. Go ahead and copy this down, if you would, please. And we really don't like fractions with equations, or equations with fractions in them, rather. Uh, but it's okay, because we can get rid of fractions really easily, class. What do I do to clear fractions from equations? Multiply by the... Multiply everything by the LCD. Everything. Multiply everything by the LCD. So everything gets multiplied, class, by? 12. 12. What happens everywhere as you multiply by the 12, class? Uh, it cancels. It cancels. That's the key. You're canceling with the denominator. So I'm canceling with the 3, class, to get a... Uh, four. four to get an 8x. Eight. Eight I cancel to get One three. 3, so I get negative 9x. Nine. Nine I cancel to get uh, five. 1, so 5, yeah. Uh, and I cancel to get negative two. a 2, so negative 2x. Two. Two 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 and then I'm ready to solve. I just knock the fractions out like we've been doing for a while here. Um, Adam, now what? Uh, move the small sum and Not yet. Wait. Okay. Combine like terms. All right, there's an 8x and a negative 9x, and then put things together, and then you get negative 1. There we go. And now that we've gotten combined, we've combined, I've got an x on both sides. Which one do we have to get rid of, Dylan? Yeah, Corey. I mean, the little one. we got to get rid of them. And the little one here is the negative 2x, remember, is smaller than negative 1x. I'm going to bring it over here, class, as a positive 2x. And there's my answer. 1x, or just x, equals 5, and we're done. We also looked at solving um, special equations with fractions, where we have just a single fraction equal to a single fraction. What do we call... A problem that has just one fraction equal to one fraction class? Uh, huh? What do we call it? Proportion. Proportion. proportion, right? A proportion is a single fraction equal to a single fraction. How do we solve proportions? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. Let's start here with the extremes and the product of the extremes. Good, Lana. Is equal to the product of the means class. Uh, and now we're ready to solve. If we could combine, we would. I can't head off hand, Lana. So instead, I'm going to say, hey, there's an X on both sides. I don't like that. we got to get rid of the little one by Juliet. And so we uh, get rid of the little one. And Lana, which one's the little one? 12X. 12X. We get rid of it by putting it on the other side as a. But while we're moving the X to the right class, we might also move the negative 8 over here to the right as a. Positive. It just saves a little time. You don't have to do it all in one step, but it might be nice. What does the equation say now, Adam? Uh, 4x equals 12x plus 12. There we go. And so we end up getting class x is equal to 3 in this one here. We also had absolute value equations. And uh, we said the key to solving absolute value equations is it 11, isn't it? Yeah. The key to solving absolute value equations class is to isolate, isolate the absolute value, set it equal to Zero. Positive, positive negative. negative. Absolute value, your key is always positive negative. So to isolate, it's going to take two steps. First class, add the, nine. add the 9 to the other side. That's going to give me a Two times uh, absolute value x plus 20. 20. 20. There we go. It's the answer to the question. There we go. A lot of us try to help them out. Uh, 20. And uh, then to finish isolating, again, we don't distribute, we isolate. Isolate that absolute value. And so we get rid of the two class by dividing, dividing it away. And when it divided away, we get uh, 10. Absolute value. There we go. Now, once we've got it isolated, 
We're going to take the x plus 3 and set it equal to both positive and negative 10. If you want to, we've kind of gotten used to this notation, haven't we? So here at the end of the year, if instead of making two equations, one equal to 10, one equal to negative 10, if you want to do it like this, that's fine. As long as when you bring the 3 over as a uh, negative. negative 3, you're able to read two separate things. Positive 10 minus 3 Seven. and negative 10 minus 3. Negative 13. negative 13. If you think you can do that, I feel like we've kind of been doing it in the last couple lessons before we start our exam review. Then you're good. If not, just make two equations. One equal to positive 10, one equal to negative 10. Questions on absolute value equations. We also, much more recently, were working on radical equations. What's the key to solving a radical equation class? Um, uh, isolate. isolate the radical, both square both sides. Absolute value, isolate the absolute value, set equal to positive, negative. Radical equation, isolate the radical, square both sides. Two steps to isolate the radical, what are they, class? Subtract the 7 and divide by 4. When I subtract the 7, I get uh, um, eight. 8. And then when I divide by 4, I get two. 2. Now we've got the radical isolated, so now we square both sides. You're getting rid of the square root by squaring. And when I square a square root, class? When I square a 2, four. Four. And then to finish it out, I just have to subtract, subtract, 11. subtract 11 from both sides. Can x is equal to? Positive. Careful. Just negative 7. Remember, quadratic positive. equations, incomplete quadratics, we end up with a positive negative. Here we never took a square root. We started with the root and got rid of it. We should check for extraneous roots, but I never squared a negative. It's highly unlikely it's extraneous, but we can check. Negative 7 plus 11? <laughs> um, 4. 4 squared to 4? 2. 2 times 4? Four? Plus 7. Okay. And of course, it checks out. Speaking of quadratic equations, I said there's two types of quadratic equations. Some quadratic equations, well, all quadratic equations, first of all, class, have to have um, a common factor. All quadratic. So what, it's what makes them quadratic. Oh, highest x squared. X is squared, right? Highest power squared. Okay, so the x squared makes this quadratic. But if I have an x as well, I have what's called a. Com complete quadratic. Oh, complete. I've got my wife. I feel complete. Go around behind the camera. Um, so this is complete, right? And for a complete quadratic equation class, generally we just um, get rid of one. Oh, wait, set it equal to zero. Yeah, we set it equal to zero. We factor, set the factors here. So this is normally what we're going to do for complete quadratic equations. So right here, what would I have to do to set this equal to zero, Dylan? Uh, move that eight to and when I do, I get? Good. Remember, keep the descending order so that you can do the next step class, which is to factor, factor completely. And it's not really showing up that well on the uh, on the screen after all, um, just because of the camera angle. But um, anyway, so factor completely, right? So we're going to factor this down. The x squared, of course, class x. signs negative. both negative thirty-two. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to split up a 32. What's the first one that comes to mind? 16. Mm. 4 and 8, right? But that doesn't give me an 18. Oh, 16. 16 and 2. Okay, there we go. So you just kind of think through the factors. 1 and 32 definitely doesn't work. Uh, 2 and 16, 4 and 8. These are only three sets. 2 and 16 is what works for me. I'm going to then set each factor equal to 0 to get two answers, class. 2 and 16. 2 and 16. That's for a complete quadratic. But we've also worked on equations that have the x squared, so they're quadratic, but they're missing something. They're lonely. They're missing the x to the first class. We would call these incomplete quadratic equations. And uh, if we have an equation like this one, we see the x squares. We know it's quadratic, but there's no x to the first for that x squared. Oh, oh no. Oh, anyway, so what do we need to do here, class? Uh, Combine like terms first of all, because we don't want multiple x squares. That's that's not how this works, right? Um, we may be lonely, but we don't need other anyway. <laughs> we need to rule our own. So we're going to combine the x squares, right? We get class four x squared <laughs> minus twelve is equal to twenty four. And now, what's the key to the incomplete quadratic? We don't set it equal to zero and factor. Isolate the x squared. What's the key to the incomplete quadratic class? Isolate. 
isolate. Incomplete, isolate, okay? So we're gonna isolate the x squared. How do we isolate the x squared here, Adam? Move the 12. As a? Positive 12. To get? Positive 36. Positive 36. Then? You divide the 12. To get? And then after it's isolated, to get just plain old x class, I've got to take the square root. When it was a radical, we squared to get rid of a radical. To get rid of a square, we use a radical. We take the square root. They just cancel each other in either direction. So we cancel to get x is equal to, now to be careful, positive. two answers. Positive negative three. Positive right. negative three. Beyond it. This is kind of a quick glimpse at the equations we have been solving this year. Any questions on solving equations? No, but can you, like, instead of, like, breaking it down to x squared, can you just take the square root of 4x squared? Yeah, well, equals. you might be able, for instance, but if I have, like, a 2x squared equals 18, are you going to take the square root of both sides right now? No. No, yeah, because you can't. But in this case, right, if you did it early, it would work out sometimes, but as it always works. What I teach is what always works consistently and reliably. Wait till you've got the x squared isolated, then take the square root. But no, it wouldn't be wrong had you taken the square root here and said 2x equals positive negative 6, and then divided away the 2, so positive negative 3. Good question. Um, what's anything to the 0 power class? One. 1. Anything to the 0 power 1. What does a negative exponent mean? Uh, if I had a, uh, uh, a to the negative third, what does a negative exponent mean? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. So a to the negative third class would be? 1 over a cubed. 1 over a cubed. What if I had a fractional exponent? a to the 3 fifths or something like that? Good. The denominator becomes the? Index. Index. And the numerator is the Five. exponent or the power. Right? Either word works there. And so a fractional exponent just indicates a root, remember, because to take the root of a power, divide the exponent by the index. And so we see that fraction, you're seeing division um, of the exponent there. Um, we talked about slope way back when, remember? Uh, slope is what of what? Uh, rise over run. What slope intercept form again? Y equals mx plus b. And as we talked about slope, we talked about slope intercept form, uh, we talked about relationships of lines to each other. We said lines could be parallel to each other. So what would make lines parallel? Uh, the same slope. If they have the same slope. Now remember in slope intercept form, find something like y equals 5x plus 2 and y equals 5x minus 7. The slopes are the same, so these would be uh, parallel lines. We also talked about perpendicular lines. Oh, yeah. Perpendicular lines. Opposite reciprocal. Opposite slopes, which would be uh, reciprocal. Reciprocal, but also not opposite reciprocal, change, but change, sign. change the sign. So we would say <gasps> negative reciprocal <laughs> slope. So for instance, what would be a perpendicular to this one here? Y equals negative one fifth x and whatever, negative 38. I don't care, right? It doesn't really matter as long as the slopes are negative reciprocals. What if I had like um, y equals negative 5x plus 3? What's true of these lines? Are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Yeah. Neither. They're different slopes, but they're not perpendicular. They'll intersect, but they're not going to be perpendicular. What about y equals a fifth x minus 4? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be different slope, right? But it's, it's, I mean, they're still both positive. One's just going up really sharp. One's going up very slow, right? But they're not going to be perpendicular. Just nothing. So exactly the same class? Um, parallel. Parallel. Ex negative reciprocals. Uh, perpendicular. perpendicular. And if they're not one of those two, eh, they just happen to intersect. Um, remember, we never multiply or never divide fractions class. We? Multiply by we also don't ever really subtract in algebra. We add the, add the inverse. Um, um, <laughs> that's kept on races. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's for Mr. Krasinski, I guess. Uh, you know. Uh, if I had uh, like an a to the negative second, we said that's what again, class? Uh, a. One over a squared. What if I had an x to the negative fourth, y to the fifth? What would I have there? 
Good. We leave the y to the fifth where it is because there's not a negative exponent on that. The x to the negative fourth still moves down, right? So something we hadn't looked at in a little while. Um, word problems. Hmm, that's a good question. Are there word problems? Let's let's flip through this thing and see. I still got four minutes. Ah, two-digit numbers. Yeah, we talked about two-digit numbers this year, right? Two-digit numbers, we said, uh, have two digits. Uh, what are the two digits in a two-digit number? The tens digit, which will represent T, and the units digit, which will represent U. But how do I actually represent the number itself? 10T plus U. 10T plus U, because the value of the tens digit is 10 times that. Um, we said if we had an interest pro word problem. Or who did interest word problems this year? We use what kind of uh, equation for interest word problems? I I P but we always said P times R P equals R. I. We always did annual interest. I would throw a curveball at you at the end, right? So annual interest, we don't really need to worry about the time. We also did uh, word problems involving distance as traveling, right? What's the equation for distance? Speed times time equals distance. Good. Speed times time equals distance. This allows us to consistently just multiply the first two categories. We did a whole lot of problems, remember, where there was a number, value, and total value. And all three of these word problems all set up a chart in very similar ways. Now, the nice thing now is, because we have systems of equations, if we had one of these, the principles could just be x and y, or the rates if we were finding rates. That would be almost always fat, we're given rates. Uh, if I were finding speeds, I could call them x and y, or times I could call x and y. Um, money amounts I could call, or numbers I could call. Excellent. I'm, I'm not doing the whole ones x, ones in terms of x. We don't need to do any of that. Now that we know systems of equations, which is really nice. Um, yes. Um, can you do a problem with like the conjugate one? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Reducing, uh, excuse me, rationalizing a denominator. If I had something like uh, three times the square root of two over the square root of five minus yeah. three. Well, here, because I've got a two-term radical denominator, I've got to multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate. conjugate. What's the conjugate? Square root of 5 plus 3. There we go. What I do to the bottom? All right. So in the denominator, because I'm multiplying by the conjugate, I always have what special case here, class? Um. <laughs> sum and difference. It's always a sum and difference. So I always do three things, Lana. Square root first Good. So when I square the first, I just get. When I square a square root, radicate. So five. There we go. And then when I square the last, that's a nine. And then I put a minus sign between. So my denominator is going to be in the final answer a negative four. In the numerator, what do I have to do? Four. Four. I only have a monomial here, so it's just distribution. What do I get when I distribute mono? Can I do anything to combine here? Mm -hmm. No. So let's leave the 3 squared to 10 plus the 9 squared to 2. Though there is one edit to my answer class. Uh, the Slide the negative to the front. Good. Good question. Good. Got about one more minute before the bell rings. Any other questions? Anything that, as you think back, Lana was like, I know this has given me trouble in the past. Anything else you see? Ooh, this has given me some trouble. Can we work one like this? Or if you're like, you know, I think I've got this. Yes, sir. Can you go over the slope-intercept form? Yes. Okay. For instance, if I had like a 2x plus 3y is equal to, I don't know, 15. Um, something like that. Um, to get slope-intercept form, again, what is slope-intercept form? Uh, oh, that's a problem. Y equals mx plus b. Uh, okay, that's slope-intercept that's form. Exactly. Yes, y equals mx plus b. So the key is to get the y uh, by, by itself. Lana, well, you can't take the test for stop helping him. So how would I get the y by itself in this equation? Uh, you move the 2x, bring up the negative 2x. So that initially I get? Uh, 3y equals 2x plus b. Well, you just said you move it as a? 2x. 3y equals negative 2x plus 15. And you would put the x before the constant, and then? Uh, you divide out so you can have y equals negative two-thirds x plus five. Good. Now, when it comes to graphing it, what do I do to graph a slope-intercept form? Uh, 
move on the Stay with me real quick. Move up the five on the y-axis. Y-axis, the y-intercept is five. So you go to positive five here on the y-axis. Then you uh, rise two, and <laughs> run three backwards. Good, rise two, and run three backward. And then you simply draw a line. Connect the dots. I draw a line through the dots. A straight edge would be beneficial for the exams. So that would be good to have with you. All right, we're going to take a break, and then we'll come back for the exam in just a few minutes. You are dismissed.